From Our Savior Lutheran Church in West Columbia, South Carolina, this is Daily Prayer with Pastor Lance for Monday, November 9th, 2020. Quiz time. If I told you that Roman Catholicism was the largest Christian denomination in the world, you'd probably say, yes, of course. If I told you Pentecostalism is second, you'd probably be surprised. But Pentecostalism has thousands upon thousands of millions upon millions of adherents worldwide. Most amazingly, it didn't start until 1903. Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California, there was a revival. That revival lasted about 12 years, but those first three years, it really, really, really grew. And there, in those, that period, documented cases of miracles happening, healing, people becoming believers almost instantly. But the other is a thing we're going to talk about today, speaking in tongues. Now, the Bible records two types of speaking in tongues. The first is what we would call xenoglossa, or xenoglossi. And that is when you can suddenly speak a language you've never spoken before. That's recorded in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. The second is probably what we're more familiar with. Uh, maybe you've witnessed it, maybe you've not. But that is speaking what's purportedly a divine language with the Holy Spirit or with the help of the Holy Spirit to speak to God. Uh, and it's a private conversation between you and God. And it doesn't it sounds like it doesn't make any sense. It just sounds like random syllable, syllables strung together. It has kind of a musical cadence to it as it occurs. Well, that's going on wildly in, of course, of all places, Corinth. And Paul addresses in his first letter. Let's listen. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 20 through 25. Brothers and sisters, do not be children in your thinking. Rather, be infants in evil, but in thinking be adults. In the law it is written, By people of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners I will speak to this people. Yet even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Tongues then are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. While prophecy is not for unbelievers, but for believers. If, therefore, the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues, and outsiders or unbelievers enter, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophecy, an unbeliever or outsider who enters, is reproved by all and called to account by all, after the secrets of the unbelievers hearts are disclosed, that person will bow down before God and worship Him, declaring, God is really among you. Okay, the most perhaps first thing to remark is he's got this curious sentence in there where he says that therefore tongues are not a sign for believers but unbelievers, while prophecy is not for unbelievers but for believers. Now, I really struggled over that because it seemed to be kind of speaking contrary to the rest of that chapter, which is all about uh, 1 Corinthians 14, all about speaking in tongues. Uh, and I went and I had to do a little research. And I thought, what does this mean? Uh, thankfully, my study Bible had a footnote that said, uh, this passage remains unclear. Oh, like, well, okay, good for me. All right, but the, Paul's point here is, look, he's not denying that people speaking in tongues is a real miraculous gift. He's saying, if everyone in the congregation is doing it, well, how's that going to edify anyone? Remember, Paul's main mission is as an evangelist, and he wants people to come both by spirit to God and with the mind. So he's saying it has to be clear to them. Two weeks ago, we were talking about Titus, and he's telling Titus, you've got to argue your points carefully. That way people will understand, and then 
become believers in Christ. So Paul's not, uh, I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of use for speaking in tongues. He says, if someone speaks in tongues and no one is around to interpret that, well, okay, fine, well, but what good does that do for the community? It's a legit question. Uh, but, you know, there was no doubt it was a phenomenon that was occurring. And Paul just calls it as what he sees it is. Uh, he couldn't see the reason in it. So that's why many did not, for example, Lutheranism, uh, probably not real big on, well, I know it's not real big on speaking in tongues. Uh, that doesn't mean it's not a real phenomena. It's just something that's not part of our toolbox as Lutherans. Uh, there, there have been moments where charismatic movements sweep through kind of mainline Christianity one, once back in the 70s. And uh, there were gifts. There's, there's charismatic Catholics. So, you know, I'm not, I don't want to come down hard on our Pentecostal friends, right? So... Paul didn't come down hard on anyone who does it. He's just wondering what use is it and what does it look like when to the non-believer when they walk in and everyone is speaking in tongues. You know, revivalism is not a bad word, right? We all need uh, a revival of our spirit, of our mind, and of our body. So, Let's have a prayer for that. Oh God, we thank you for times of refreshment and peace in the course of this busy life. Grant that we may so use our leisure for the renewal of our bodies, spirits, and minds, that we may be open to the goodness of your creation and the grace of the one in whose name we pray, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hey there, viewer, please uh, subscribe to this channel, and uh, give us a like. Give us a share, give us a comment.